If pictures are worth a thousand words, then the expressions of Pete Carrill would fill a coaching novel. Today, his Tigers head to Piscataway to battle Bob Wetzel's Scarlet Knights. Keith Hughes continues to impress as Rutgers prepares for the rumble in the urban jungle. It's the battle for New Jersey next. from the Lewis Brown Athletic Center on the campus of Rutgers University, the Scarlet Knights get set to host the Tigers of Princeton, the Atlantic 10, the Ivy League, squaring off. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to College Basketball on ESPN. I'm Bill Patrick. It's a Garden State showdown, if you will, a battle of the unbeatens, that's for sure, and yet another road test for the Tigers, who have been road warriors this season. They have yet to play a game at home. They are unbeaten, as is uh, Rutgers. In case you missed it, late last night in the Daiwa Ball, up at halftime, we will profile the professor, Coach Pete Carrill, the miracle worker at Princeton, find out what makes him tick. But that's at halftime. Coming up next, it is Carrill's Princeton Tigers taking on Keith Hughes and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. We'll see you at halftime, everybody. Enjoy the game. teams in college basketball that year in year out you can say are unique but for 24 years Pete Carrill's Princeton Tigers have lived up to that label you may beat him but you're gonna have to play his way welcome everyone to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center the rack as they call it here at Rutgers where this afternoon a couple of unbeatens renew one of the oldest rivalries in the country the Princeton Tigers are set to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers I'm Mike Gorman along with Clark Kellogg you would know better than I how he does it but Princeton makes you play their way Clark. they like to control the tempo Mike they want to play a slow down type of game they're a good defensive team and they value every single possession of the basketball the center for the Tigers Kit Miller may end up the second leading all-time scorer at Princeton, but one of the keys this afternoon, the backcourt in Sean Jackson. Sean Jackson, a deadly three-point shooter, 20 of his 22 made field goals from behind the arc, 44% from three-point range. Look for him to crack, crank it up from that area. Now on the other side for Rutgers, because you always hear coaches Clark talk about being patient, and fans think that means patient on the offensive end. You say Rutgers has to be patient on the other end. I really think so, because Princeton wants to control tempo. They run the passing game offense, so you have a tendency to get a little frustrated defensively. Rutgers needs to play solid man-to-man -man defense. For a long time. For a long, long time. And, of course, a lot of these games in college basketball are won in the paint, and Rutgers, at least by the numbers, has a tremendous advantage there. No question about it. Brent Dabbs returning from an ankle injury, 13 points, 9 boards a game. Keith Hughes, a pro prospect at 20 and 12 boards, so they'll look to take advantage of that size and strength inside. And those two, indeed, you can see how they dominate. Hughes and Dabbs between between the two, average 21 rebounds a game. Princeton's top seven players average only 20 rebounds a game. So again, the paint may be key here this afternoon. But this is a great in-state rivalry. Princeton does very well usually when they play. We expect a good one here this afternoon. The rack will be loud. Rutgers and Princeton for the 97th time coming up on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball, Princeton and Rutgers, brought to you by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. By McDonald's. You know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. And by Aetna, a policy to do more. And welcome back once again, everyone, to the rack here in Piscataway, New Jersey. The Princeton Tigers undefeated. The Rutgers also without a loss here early in the season. We'll take a look at the Princeton lineup. And double zero is indeed Kit Miller. Looks like Mueller, but he pronounces it Miller. Eastwick, Mooney, Jackson, and Leftwich also in the starting five for Princeton. And for Rutgers, 
That is Brent Dabbs, who we didn't see the first time here on ESPN a few weeks ago when Clark and I were in here to see Rutgers upset Missouri. Now Dabbs back in the middle. One would think makes them better. Hughes, Smith, Carter will start in the backcourt. Earl Duncan has a sprained ankle. He will play today, but he will not start. Princeton leading this series convincingly. 65-31. to 31. They've won four of the last five, which is something of a surprise. Rutgers, the only unbeaten Atlantic 10 team left in their best start since 1982. All right, we're set to go. Good morning to much of the country. Dabs and Miller will go up. And Princeton will have it first time. Leftwich and Jackson again the backcourt. Princeton going right inside to Miller. Rutgers opens in a man-to-man. -man. Important again for them to be patient at the defensive end. Princeton wants to use 30, 38 seconds of that shot clock and hope you wear down defensively. Miller will play all over the place. Inside, outside. That's Jackson with the ball. Mooney goes back inside to Miller. Tries to find a way. No. And it's Hughes with the rebound. I really think it's important for Rutgers to get an early lead. Princeton very good at playing on top because they're excellent free throw shooters. 30 seconds, Princeton held the ball in their first possession. And when you say an early lead, Clark, you're, you're talking like 8 to 10 points. Exactly. Six points is not enough simply because Princeton is a team that shoots the three-pointer and they shoot it fairly well, 39% on the year. And Rutgers turns it over, trying to be patient on the offensive end. Mike Jones with the travel. Princeton pretty good defensively. I talked to assistant coach Jan Van Bredekoff this afternoon's tilt. And he talked about how they had struggled with consistency at the offensive end, but defensively they've been playing very well. There's a little weave looking to get Jackson open for the three. They found him. Can't get it down, and it's all rushes on the board. Dabs with his first rebound. Now, you see what's happening here? Rutgers is a team that likes to play up-tempo. But even after the defensive board, they walk it up. And that's what Princeton will do to you. They'll force you to play at a slower pace. We may be out of here in an hour and a half, too. I mean, this is like running time, this game. <laughs> Hughes can't hit outside. Hustles and gets his own rebound and gets it back out to Jones. They'll start over again. Princeton showing a 1-2-2, one, 1-3-1 two, two, one, one look. Matchup zone. Carter takes it. Carter takes it in the paint. His shot won't go. Miller battles and comes down with a rebound. Lots of time for color in this game. <laughs> Again, a double pick. A nice steal by Smith. Excellent hand. Smith takes it all the way. Won't get the layup, but through the foul. Mooney commits his first. Well, that's one way to increase the tempo of the game with a turnover. Active hands here by Smith. And he's one of their catalysts defensively, Daryl Smith. Really active and athletic. And with him, Jones, and Craig Carter in the lineup right now for Rutgers, they've got a pretty good defensive front, well, backcourt three. You and I both left here very impressed with Daryl Smith off the game against Missouri a few weeks back. He was everywhere. He was like a monster back in football. He was all over the place in that game against Missouri. Let's see if Rutgers goes to the full court pressure after the mate. Princeton very good at handling pressure, taking care of the basketball, only averaging 10 turnovers a game. Eastwood, 55, looking inside to Miller. Nice bounce pass for Jackson. Cannot lose sight of your man, Mike Jones. Ball watching, got burned. They get so many layups, but Little pressure here by the Tigers. Hughes, and it's a backcourt violation. Now, we were kidding about that earlier. I was kidding the sports information director at Princeton. I said, you guys will come out pressing all over the floor and, and you went and talked to Jan Van Bredekoff and he said yeah we will a little bit and exactly and they do a nice job of forcing the turnover Rutgers maybe not expecting that pressure that possession there's another cutback door and it'll send Eastwood to the line see both of these teams know 
what the other wants to do. Look how look look at the floor spacing here. Now watch the back cut. There's Eastwick. Nice look by Miller. And this is a 79% free throw shooting team. But the key to their offensive execution is good ball handling, but more importantly, good floor spacing. Players 12, 15 feet apart, always ready to take what the defense gives. Here's the full court pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, it looks like now. 2-1-2. Two, two. Forcing it up the sidelines. No trap. Basically token pressure. Hughes flashing through the middle. Lost the handle. Late call by Jerry Donahue. He's got Eastwick with the foul as first. So I think one of the things Keith Hughes and Brent Dabb are going to have to do when they catch him in the paint, flashing to the ball, they can't afford to put it down. There's nobody on Princeton's squad that can bother their shots inside. They need to catch it looking to score right away. Jones resetting the offense. Hughes down on the blocks. Quick turnaround, Jay. He got away with the one dribble there, but I think he, the idea is good. He's got to look to score right away because they'll converge on him when he catches it inside. You know the Rutgers kids have heard about how they'll get burned for these layups, and you can see it, even though they didn't have the press crank up there, there's a tentativeness. They, they don't want to get caught out of position because they know what's going to happen. That's right. That's why you just have to be patient. You need good help side defense, and one of the other keys, you need pressure on the basketball. So you can't allow the passer to size up all these cutters. You've got to put some heat on it, get some hurries in there. Work going on in the far corner. It is a wet day here in the Northeast. Mixture of rain, sleet, and snow outside. Lots of accidents in the area, and the sellout crowd is still filing in. But this place expected to be packed. In fact, they're selling standing room for this game after. Jackson and Leftwich. Leftwich 22. Kind of pressure you need on the basketball slide there by Daryl Smith. Big advantage for Princeton too is Miller can go just about anywhere on the floor. Mooney comes up shooting a three over the top rebound tipped out of bounds by Jones and the Tigers will keep it. Miller gives you a good advantage there. He can come out to the top of the exactly. Two. Their players are basically interchangeable, maybe with the exception of Eastwood. There's Jackson coming up with a steal after the turnover. But see, the other four guys can all go outside, and even Eastwick will go outside, but he's not as comfortable out there as the rest of the four, the rest of the Princeton players. Look at that. Look at that. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. Chris Mooney, his first bucket. Hughes, nice catch before the shot. A foul is going to go on Eastwick, and he's got two. Nice look to get it over the top of the press by Daryl Smith. But excellent offensive execution. Both of these teams know what the other is going to do. It's just a matter of who executes it better. 15.35 left to go here first half. Second foul on Eastwick. Princeton, a two-point lead. 6-4 Princeton, and we may see a lot of these this afternoon, Clark. Well, Daryl Smith is going to get caught in the left portion of your screen looking at the basketball. And any time you turn your head defensively against the Princeton player, immediately the back cut. Chris Mooney gets the deuce. Well, it's just, you know, it's fun to watch Princeton because you don't see guys making good hard basket cuts on a regular basis or ball cuts. And they do it. They do an outstanding job of floor spacing and finding the cutting player. I feel like I'm watching an instructional film. <laughs> Very clinical in nature, that's for sure. Hughes flashing into the lane, short with that Mooney to rebound. And Leftwich will walk it up. Again, the advantage we talked about, Miller can come out and really relieve any ball pressure, and Dab tries to cover him too tight to get the feeling Miller will go by him. Dab's doing what he needs to do out that far away from the hoop. You don't want to crowd Miller. 
Eastwood fakes the three. Leaves it to Mooney. Miller takes one with 10 in the shot clock. Three points for Kip Miller. And it's a 9-4 Tiger lead. And again, the pressure in the backcourt. This is not the way Rutgers wants to play from behind. And that's much more dangerous when they've got the lead. Jones down on the baseline. Gets the roll. Rutgers not going to press. And you want to back up and just play half-court defense. You need to see more of that type of penetration against the Princeton zone defense by Rutgers. Inside to Miller. Looking back outside of Jackson. Mooney backs it off. Down 15 on the shot clock. So Princeton eating up 30 seconds plus at least. There's another cut, and this time it was Jones who got there in time to pick it off. Make it Smith right. Right, he anticipated beautifully that time. And Miller had made up his mind to make that pass before he caught the ball. Mitchell had trouble getting the handle. Fine dabs in the middle for two. See, a little fumble on the baseline by Smith created that opportunity for Dabs inside. Down low to Miller. Back outside, Mooney. Too much Knocks time. Down a three. Yeah, time to clean the gun, load it, then fire it. Can't give these guys that type of time, especially behind the three-point arc. Jones nearly lost it. Here's Carter. Down the lane, no traveling violation. Oh, I don't like that one. I might. Oh, that looks like a pretty nice move by Craig Carter. Take a look here. That's the jump step he Yes, calls. sir. That's a good move. Basket should have been good. Sometimes when you look funny making a move to the basket, that puts the whistle in the official's mouth. And Jerry Donahue very quick to break up some between Jones and Eastwick. And it looks like the foul is going against Eastwick. And that is three on Matt Eastwick. So Pete Carrill into his bench a little earlier than he might like as Eastwick sits down with three. And here comes Earl Duncan in the lineup first time. Bob Wenzel goes to his bench. And Tom Savage also will check in for the Scarlet Knights. Chris Marquardt, a freshman, is in for Princeton. You were saying to me earlier, Clark, you felt the whole object of the Princeton full-court pressure was to get the wrong guy, as far as Rutgers is concerned, to handle the ball. That's right. Inside, and there's a foul on Marquardt over the back of Hughes. Nice execution here in the half court by Rutgers. But in talking to Coach Van Bredekoff, he talked about forcing the non-ball handling guard to handle the, handle the ball. And so far, it hasn't worked that way here in the early going. Hughes, that's a nice high-low action here. Duncan made the pass that led to the assist. Got it up top. And Hughes able to get inside and have an opportunity at the strike. Keith Hughes, they call him Shake because of how he wiggles those shoulders when he runs back after he scores. Got a chance at the next level. Great Good numbers. body. Yep. Can shoot it outside. Gets to the board. Been on about 15 pounds since last year. Ran at about 235 and said he feels great. Scarlet Knights back to within two with the pace of this game very much the way Princeton would like it. 12 to 10. We've played eight minutes. Look at this face. Over the top, Miller, nice tip pass to Leftwood. Leftwood won't look to shoot it. Only averaging a couple of field goal attempts per game. Not too many guys do during the first 25 seconds. So. <laughs> Good point. Jackson, he will. That does not having too much trouble getting that defensive rebound. There a turnover as Duncan tried to 
sneak a pass through where there wasn't any room. See, and at this pace, every empty possession is significant. Miller going to go on dabs this time, gets two. Oh, well, he's a deceptively tough inside player. You know, he walked by me while we were downstairs, and he put together pretty good. Marquardt getting there late and picks up the blocking foul, his second. So that one position for Pete Carrillo is getting themselves in early foul trouble. Already Eastwick on the bench with three. Marquardt came in from him, and he picked up a quick two. We've got a timeout, 11-11 to go in the half, 14-10 for instance. Great night of college basketball coming up here on ESPN. Top rank Alabama and North Carolina will take the court at 7.30. North Carolina looking for a payback off a loss last year. And then a shootout of the first order. Loyola Marymount and the Oklahoma Sooners. All coming up this evening on ESPN. And it has not been the loudest rack of the year here at the Lewis Brown Recreation Center. Oh, the rack has been muzzled. As we expected, an yep. Interesting number there. Savage touching it first time in the offensive end. Gives it to Duncan. Popping out Dabs, launching one. Nice job by Miller, boxing off on the board. Princeton a four-point lead and the ball halfway through this first half. That's not something that Rutgers wants to allow to continue. Princeton the lead and the ball because they're dangerous in that situation. That cut didn't work, and Dabs was there. Oh, Duncan for three. <laughs> That'll get the fans here off their seat. You know, it's really not, not the type of game where the fans can get into it unless you're able to put together a little spurt. Miller trying to slap pass, comes up with it himself and lays it in. Accidental offense for the Tigers. They lead by three. Boy, when you catch it in the middle against the press, you need to look to attack. He used that time elected to pull it out. Anytime a team presses you, you ought to be looking to score. Third Carter. Hughes dumping it to Dad. Carter now a little dribble drive, nearly lost it to left, which takes it back in traffic. Good dish, but no one offensive foul is called. As Matt Henson did a pretty good job, at least according to Jimmy Burr, of getting position in the lane. Boy, excellent idea. Let's take a look. Nice little hesitation. Now he gets into the heart of the defense. Three converge. And I tell you what, Henson backing up. Maybe not stationary there. Jackson looking inside, goes to Marquardt this time. Miller pops out. Marquardt wanting to go back, slapped away by Dabbs, but he stepped out of bounds. Nice play, though, by Brent Dabbs to get back in it. Got to be ready on the weak side against a team like Princeton. Always have to be conscious of man and ball. goes low to Miller. Spins for the sweeping hook. Doesn't get the roll. Nearly tipped by Marquardt. Picked off the floor by Carter. Over to Duncan. Duncan. A little too tricky and he lost it to Jackson. Two on one. Princeton break. Nice feed. Leftwood can't get it down. Out of bounds. Off Duncan. Good call. Eight forty-one to go. Princeton still by three here in the first half. Pete Carrill. Bobby Wenzel. Tough to coach against legends. <laughs> and Feet is a legend. And a quick call on Dabs as he tried to get to Miller. Brent picking up his first personal foul. Just the third on Rutgers. Mike Jones. Checks back in, and Craig Carter goes out for the Scarlet Knights. Now, off that one pass right there, Clark. 
75% of the kids in college basketball who caught that way Jackson did just like let it go. I mean, they, they just fired away when they got that inbound shot. They're looking for the high percentage shot. Miller way short. Nice hustle play there by Henson to come up with the rebound. And Princeton is making Rutgers stand around a bit here, Bob. Exactly. They do such a good job of keeping the floor spread. They've got the defense spread out as well. So on missed shots, there are more lanes to the offensive block. Miller looking to find some room. Blocked by Dabbs. Offensive foul called on Miller for jumping back in. Excellent call that time by Art McDonald. Miller trying to initiate contact. He's going to get the baseline, shoehorning along the baseline. Now watch the jump in. Good call. Excellent call. Jones bringing it up again. Tension. Rutgers too tentative against the pressure. Savage looking to take it strong. Won't go for him. Here comes Leftwich. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Henson Off the ball. Savage. Nobody got... saw it but us, Mike. Boy, Savage just slapped Henson across the face. Down low to Miller. Look at the spin on Dabbs. Goes the other way. Won't go left-handed. And Savage in there for the rebound. Yeah, I don't see that emphasis to and run. Jones just took a shot at Henson on the other side of the floor. Who said this rivalry has died down? Good look down low. Dabbs for two. Mike Jones with a good feed. Watch off the ball, fans, because it's kind of chippy out there right it now. It really is. Miller's had a tough time. Rutgers doing a nice job just playing behind it. Miller's Play behind it. Last three, yeah. And force him into a tough shot. Jackson for three. Rebound. Jones does a nice job of keeping the dribble alive and comes out of there himself. Another turnover by Rutgers. These empty trips are going to haunt this team before the day is through. See, what I think is happening, Mike, is Rutgers are slowing down too much. They're not really pushing the ball forward, and as a, as a result, they're turning it over. Six and a half to go first half, but Princeton still holding on to the lead. They're up by one. 16-15, Princeton by one with 6.31 to go here in the first half. You know, the Princeton Tigers have a great home winning streak. And someday, Clark, someday soon, they'll get a chance to extend that as the Tigers have been the original road warriors here. Best start under Pete Carroll in 24 years. But they're just all road games. St. Mary's and Iona were in a tournament up in Rochester. And it gets worse as it goes on. Rutgers today, then at UNLV, then at the Cable Car Classic. And they will play their first home game of the year on January 11th. Pete, who makes your schedule better? One thing about it, they know they won't go home below 500 after this nice start. That's just shooting 50%, but only getting 10 shots in 13 minutes. Princeton going to be for five in the last season. Henson taking it in for two. Back to the three-point lead. Left with just with some pressure on Jones. Jones takes it himself. Little runner is short. Hughes, tough shot. Goes down. Keith Hughes with the offensive board and basket. One of the major concerns for the Princeton Tigers, Keith Hughes, as he is for every opponent of Rutgers. That time just going to work on the offensive glass. And we're looking for a backfield cut. It wasn't there. Leftwich takes it and the paint leaves it for Miller. This is Chris Yetman who just checked into the game off the last time out, giving Jackson a breather. Henson driving again to the hoop. And he, oh, a travel. Thought a reach in was going to be called, but Jerry Donahue with the travel underneath. So Rutgers a chance to get a lead and maybe get the crowd at the rack into this ballgame. 515 to go first half. I really think Rutgers too much on their heels. Not really attacking. 
And you have to give Princeton some credit, but it seems like Rutgers has allowed Princeton to control tempo. Hughes misses the short jumper, and Leftwich is there. Oh, very definitely. And Hughes, the only aggressive player I see on the floor for Rutgers offensively. Here's a backdoor cut by Marquard, and he dribbled, and he traveled. I thought he dribbled on the baseline, but travel was called. So the turnover is cleanly. piling up now for Princeton. But they still have the lead. That's not characteristic of their squad. Turnovers are seven apiece. Came in averaging, what, ten puck? Ten turnovers a game. Plus four in the turnover ratio. Takes you by Miller. Will be behind the back dribble. Ball's loose. Miller, a great play to get it ahead, but a better block by Carter. It's tracked down, though, by Henshaw. And Miller back up all the floor to help out. A defensive play gets the crowd on their feet. Carter again with the quick hand. Maybe the spark will come on the defensive end. They might have to. Because offensively, Rutgers not doing it. Inside Miller, back outside Marquard. Nice cut off the ball, and there's another layup. Henson getting it this time. That's a silencer. And the way they do it, too, Bob, it's not like they go up and jam it. They just kind of lay it off the glass. <laughs> Insult to injury. Yeah. reminder that we're if we beat you it will be with basic fundamental basketball they caught it going one on one and got a foul on a pick i believe oh three second violation yep 330 to go just about every break we've had princeton's been up three and they are again 20 to 17. the tigers by three 20 to 17 330 to go in the half and here's another layup well here we see Hughes in a box-out position. See, he's in a box-out position, totally out of position here, and unable to react to the back cut. And Henson gets the easy deuce. But Hughes should have been in a half denial position as opposed to with his back to his man. Are you surprised you're not seeing more full court pressure out of the night? I really am. If you're talking about controlling tempo, and I think you have to do what your team is most comfortable doing, regardless of what the opposition would like to do. And then just make it a battle of execution. So far, Princeton style has the tendency to make you tentative. And I think you have to overcome that by being aggressive at both ends of the floor. And so far, Rutgers has not been aggressive enough offensively. And I'm surprised you haven't seen more of the pressure, although you need to score on a regular basis in order to put the pressure on. Miller looking to drive. Outside jumper, Henshin is wild, and Duncan's got the rebound. Inside, Hughes, a little quick turnaround. No, rebound pulled down by Marquardt. Pretty good shot there. Yep. Six from the floor. Good help there by Duncan. You know, it's amazing. Princeton will rarely beat you off the dribble. It's always via the air or the floor with the bounce pass. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds on the shot clock. The ball finds its way to Miller. Sweeping hook for two. You don't see that shot much that very gone. often, do you? <laughs> Biggest lead for Princeton, it's five with 1.45 to go in the half. The pass nearly picked off. Duncan finds Carter. Good look for Dab. You know, that's the type of hoop you need to get when you're pressure. The first time Rutgers is really attacked with the court pressure. We got it going now, and these guys come up and eat 30 seconds on you. You get back in your heels again, and they get left. That's what's so frustrating. It's almost like you can't rattle them. You 
especially when it's a close ball game. That's why the eight point cushion is so critical, I think. Rutgers needs to think about any lead before they talk about an eight point. Henson going baseline, kicks it over to Yetman. Should have taken the shot, perhaps Marquardt will, and carries a three. Took it with four seconds on the shot clock. a minute to play first half. Rutgers with 19 points on the board. Come in averaging 74 per outing. Carter looking, finds Duncan. Looks like they're content to milk the shot clock. Princeton will have the last opportunity before halftime. Five second difference in the clocks and Rutgers down to 10 now on the shot clock. Over the top to Hughes. That was a risky pass. Hughes got it. Rutgers got lucky there. Barry. Kit Miller really upset that he doesn't come up with the steal because that ends up leading to a foul. So often you see that happen. A good play being so close to being a good play. Miller has full control, unable to reel it in. And Henson picks up the reach in. Stick around at halftime as we will have a special look at Princeton's professor of hoops, Pete Carrill. He's a piece of work, he is. <laughs> Sometimes I think he has supernatural powers he just kind of exerts over the other team. And I don't care how much bigger or quicker you are, you will play my way. will have nine seconds of the alternating possession to try to salvage this trip. Bob Wenzel cannot be pleased. I mean, it, it, it's, there's not a whole lot you can do with Princeton, but... Well, he's not pleased, but he certainly is not surprised. I can't see that. I guess I was going to say, though, Clark, too many empty trips for us. Oh, no question about that. He has to be disappointed in that. I mean, I think even when they've gotten defensive rebound, there's been no push to get it out and try to get Bob Wenzel cannot be pleased. I mean, it, it, it's, there's not a whole lot you can do with Princeton, but... Well, he's not pleased, but he certainly is not surprised. I can't see you that. I guess I was going to say, though, Clark, too many empty trips for us. Oh, no question about that. He has to be disappointed in that. I mean, I think even when they've gotten defensive rebound, there's been no push to get it out and try to get something easy. Offensively, it's been a little bit of a struggle for us. Lean in jumper won't go down. Rebound taken down by Leftwich. He won't have time to get one off, but the Princeton Tigers will go to the locker room with a six point lead. They come into the rack here in Piscataway. It doesn't seem to phase them. Our score at the half Princeton 25 and Rutgers 19. Five, six points at halftime. We invite you to join us later tonight.